Hey everybody, hello and welcome back to our channel Info Island. So guys, आज का हमारा ये टॉपिक काफी ज्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग है और क्यूरियोसिटी भरा है उन लोगों के लिए जिन लोगों को स्पेस से रिलेटेड या सैटेलाइट से रिलेटेड या स्पेस मिशन से रिलेटेड जानने की काफी ज्यादा क्यूरियोसिटी रहती है Well, I can understand because I feel the same for the same. So yes, guys. हमारा ये आज का वीडियो उन लोगों के लिए तो काफी ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है ही जो कि कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स की प्रिपरेशन कर रहे हैं या फिर किसी और एग्जाम की प्रिपरेशन कर रहे हैं साथ ही साथ ये हमारा आज का वीडियो बेसिक जनरल नॉलेज के पर्सपेक्टिव से भी काफी ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है बिकॉज द टॉपिक इज इसरो दैट इज इंडियन स्पेस रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो गाइज आज के हम अपने वीडियो में इसरो की बात करेंगे स्पेस रिलेटेड चीजों के बारे में बात करेंगे इस इसरो का जो मिशन वगैरह रह चुका है उसके हम बारे में बात करेंगे अचीवमेंट्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट तो वीडियो को पूरा देखिएगा एंड डोंट फॉरगेट टू वॉच द वीडियो टिल द एंड एंड शेयर इट विद योर फ्रेंड्स हमारे ये वीडियो उन लोगों के लिए भी काफ़ी इंटरेस्टिंग होने वाला है जिनको स्पेस मिशन में और इन सब चीज़ों में क्यूरियोसिटी रहती है या फिर जिनको स्पेस में या इसरो में काम करने का काफ़ी ज़्यादा मन करता है तो गाइज वन मोर थिंग अगर आप न्यूज देखते ही हैं तो आप ये जानते ही होंगे कि आजकल के टाइम में कितनी ज्यादा रेसफुल ये चीज हो गई है हर कंट्री चाहती है कुछ ना कुछ न्यू लॉन्च करना चाहे वो नया सैटेलाइट हो या फिर चाहे ये पता ही लगाना हो कि कौन से प्लानट पर एग्जिस्टेंस पॉसिबल है या नहीं आजकल हर जगह हर कंट्री स्पेस में है वो मून पे जाना चाहते हैं स्टार्स पे मार्स पे इनफैक्ट वो इस होड़ में लगे रहते हैं टू फाइंड आउट कि किस प्लानट पे एग्जिस्टेंस पॉसिबल है सर्वाइवल है या नहीं है इनफैक्ट अब तो लोग एस्टेरॉइड्स पर भी जाने की बातें करने लगे हैं तो uh, अब पॉसिबल है या नहीं वो तो रिसर्चर्स ही फाइंड आउट करके आपको बताएंगे और बाकी उसके बाद हम आपको न्यूज नोटिफिकेशन के थ्रू उस चीज के बारे में बताएंगे टिल देन आप हमारा वीडियो देखिए इसमें हमने आज के वीडियो में हमने इसरो के जो सेंटर्स हैं इसरो के जो यूनिट्स हैं वो कहाँ कहाँ पर हैं टोटल कितने सेंटर्स हैं कौन कौन सी स्टेट में अवेलेबल है और इसरो के मिशन अचीवमेंट्स फॉर्मेशन एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा ये सब कुछ हमने इस वीडियो के कंपाइलेशन में शेयर करा है जो कि आपको हंड्रेड श्योर आपके कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम की प्रेपरेशन में मदद करेगा इसरो ने क्या क्या लॉन्च किया है अभी के प्रेजेंट इसरो के प्लान्स क्या है और फ्यूचर में भी क्या प्लान्स होने वाले हैं इसरो के उन सब के बारे में भी हमने बात किया है एंड आल्सो इसरो के जो रिक्रूटमेंट कुछ एग्जाम चल रहे हैं कुछ आगे आने वाले हैं इसरो के रिक्रूटमेंट के बारे में भी हमने शेयर करा है सो चलिए लेट्स क्विकली बिगिन द वीडियो एंड लुक आउट द थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू इसरो एंड इट्स मिशन एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा सो यस लेट्स so let's begin with knowing more about ISRO as in the Indian Space Research Organization. so what exactly ISRO is? ISRO is the National Space Agency of India. it is headquartered in Bangalore, Karnataka. operating under the Department of Space as in DOS, ISRO is India's primary agency for performing tasks related to space-based applications, space exploration, and the development of related technologies. It is one of the six government space agencies in the world which possess full launch capabilities and can deploy cryogenic engines, launch extraterrestrial missions, and also operate large fleets of artificial satellites now let's talk about some of the objectives of isro so isro is the national space agency of india for the purpose of all space based applications like reconnaissance communications and doing research it also undertakes the design and development of space rockets satellites explores upper atmosphere and deep space exploration missions the indian national committee for space research or which is also known as incospar in short 
was established by India's first Prime Minister, Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru, under the Department of Atomic Energy, that is DAE, in 1962. On the urging of scientist Vikram Sarabhai, recognizing the need in space research. In Kaspar grew and became ISRO on 15th of August 1969 within DAE, that is Department of Atomic Energy. ISRO built India's first satellite uh, named as Aryabhat, which was launched by the Intercosmos Soviet Union in 1975. Now let's talk about some of the milestones of ISRO. So the very first is ISRO built its first satellite in 1975 and named it as Aryabhat. This was launched by the Soviet Union. Next we have the first Indian built launch vehicle that was SLV-3 and it was used to launch the Rohini satellite in 1980. Next, we have the first Indian made sounding rocket was the RH-75, that is Rohini-75. It was launched from TERLS in 1967. It weighed almost around just 32 kgs. Series of Rohini sounding rockets were developed by ISRO for atmospheric and meteorological studies. Next, we have uh, ISRO launched its first INSAT satellite in 1982. It was a communications satellite. It was named as INSAT-1A, which failed in orbit. The next communication satellite, INSAT-1B, was launched in 1983. On the list of milestones of ISRO, next we have ISRO has developed three types of launch vehicles for rocket or rockets as in uh, namely the PSLV that is the polar satellite launch vehicle the GSLV which is the geosynchronous geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle and geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle mark 3 that is GSLV mark 3 or which is also known as LVM ISRO also launched the very first IRS in 1988. So IRS as in remote sensing satellite in 1988. Next, ISRO also launched its first lunar mission Chandrayaan in the year 2008. Next in the list of milestones, ISRO also established in 1983 with commissioning of INSAT-1B the Indian National Satellite, INSAT, system is one of the largest domestic communication satellite systems in the Asia-Pacific region with nine operational communication satellites placed in geostationary orbit. Next in the list of milestones of ISRO, ISRO also launched the Mars Orbiter Mission, which is also known as MOM in short, or the Mangalyaan in 2014. With this, India became the very first country to achieve success in putting a satellite in the Mars orbit in its maiden attempt and the fourth space agency and the first space Asian agency to do so. Next, ISRO has also launched many small satellites mainly for experimental purposes such as INS-1C, Aryabhat, Apple, Rohini Technology Payload, YouthSat, etc., etc. The experiment includes remote sensing, atmospheric studies, payload development, orbit controls, recovery technology, and much more. Next is, uh, let's talk about Scramjet, which is a supersonic combustion ramjet engine. In August 2016, ISRO successfully conducted the scramjet, that is supersonic combustion ramjet, engine test. It uses hydrogen as fuel and oxygen from the atmospheric air as the oxidizer. 
ISRO's advanced technology vehicle as an ATV in short, which is an advanced sounding rocket, was the ro solid rocket booster used for the test of scramjet engines at supersonic conditions. This test was the median short duration experimental test of ISRO's scramjet engine with a hypersonic flight at 6th of March. The new propulsion, propulsion system will complement ISRO's reusable launch vehicle that would have a longer flight duration. Next in the list of milestones of ISRO, we have Gaganyaan. India's manned mission to space, also termed as Gaganyaan, this project is part of the government's ambition to make India a global low-cost low cost provider of services in space. The launch vehicle for this mission will carry heavy payloads into space. For this purpose, GSLV MK3 is being developed with a cryogenic engine. ISRO has already tested the GSLV MK3 with experimental crew module, re-entry and recovery technology and crew escape system that is CES. In 2017, ISRO created another world record by launching 104 satellites in a single rocket. It launched its heaviest rocket yet. The Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle Mark III and placed the GSAT-19 in orbit. Next, let's talk about MOM as in Mars Orbiter Mission. It also known as Mangalyaan Mission is the sinusure of many of the technological breakthroughs achieved by ISRO in the space domain. Furthermore, we will cover the information of the objectives of the mission, launch vehicle, scientific payloads, achievements, awards, and tracking locations. Now let's talk about some of the objective of the Mangalyan mission. So the very first objective was to study of Martian atmosphere. Next was study of Martian surface features. Next, the the objective was morphology and on number fourth the objective of the Mangalyan mission was to know about the mineralogy. Now let's talk about the launch vehicles and the launch pad of Mars Orbiter mission. Mars Orbiter mission was launched with the help of the polar satellite launch vehicle that is PSLV C-25. PSLV C25 is an Excel version of the PSLV launch vehicle. This mission was launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota, located in Nellore district of Andhra Pradesh. Next, this mission was launched by ISRO on 5th of November 2013. Now let's talk about some of the achievements of Mars Orbiter mission or popularly known as MOM. India is the first country in the world to achieve Mars orbit insertion in the very first attempt. The cost of this mission was $74 million. It cost less than a famous Hollywood movie named Gravity. Number two. MOM is the cheapest interplanetary space mission in the world. It is the first interplanetary space mission of India. Next, it is the first Indian spacecraft to survive the Van Allen belt by crossing it 39 times. Now let's talk about Chandrayaan mission. Chandrayaan mission was launched by the Indian Space Research Organization and was India's first mission to the moon. The spacecraft was launched on 22nd October 2008 by a modified version of the PSLVC-2 from Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh. 
the vehicle was successfully inserted into lunar orbit on 8th of november 2008 isro is planning mission chandrayaan 3 in late 2021 or early 2022 india launched chandrayaan 2 from satish dhawan space center shri harikota on 22nd july 2019 so actually isro was planning uh, about having a uh, chandrayaan 3 mission in uh, late 2021 or in the early 2022 chandrayaan 1 in 1999 the indian academy of sciences initiated an idea of undertaking an indian scientific mission to moon This initiative was followed by a discussion with the Astronautical Society of India in 2000. Based on the recommendations, a National Lunar Mission Task Force was constituted by the Indian Space Research Organisation (ISRO). Thereafter, India's first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1, was launched on 22nd October 2008 from Satish Dhawan Space Centre. at shri harikota andhra pradesh objectives of chandrayaan 1 the very first objective is to perform high resolution remote sensing of the moon's surface second to provide a three dimensional atlas of the moon near and far side third to conduct chemical and mineralogical studies for mapping of the entire lunar surface and fourth to test the impact of a sub satellite on the lunar surface for its future soft landing missions next is chandrayaan 2 chandrayaan 2 is the second lunar mission of india after the success of chandrayaan 1 this mission was conducted for topographical researchers and mineralogical studies to have a better understanding of the moon's origin and evolution chandrayaan 2 mission was launched from the satish dhawan space on 22nd july 2019 by gslv mk3 m1 the main aim of chandrayaan 2 was to trace the location and abundance of lunar water on the moon's surface Now let's talk about some of the key features or we can also say the highlights of Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2 fosters the findings of Chandrayaan 1 as reported by the ISRO. The mission targeted the south polar region of the moon which was completely unexplored. Number 3, the mission focused on the extensive mapping of the lunar surface for studying variations in its composition and tracing the moon's origin and evolution number 4 chandrayaan 2 was considered as a challenging mission as the south polar region of the moon was totally unexplored by any space agency before components of chandrayaan 2 launch vehicle so it has a uh, S200 solid rocket booster L110 liquid state C25 upper stage The Chandrayaan 2 mission consisted of three main modules number 1 lunar orbiter number 2 vikram lander which was named after vikram sarabhai the late father of india's space program number 3 lunar rover named pragyan these all of the above parts that we talked about they were all developed in india only next let's talk about aditya l1 mission which was india's first solar mission aditya and l1 mission is india's first solar mission planned by the indian space research organization that is isro earlier the name was aditya 1 which has been renamed as aditya l1 mission later 
It is ISRO's second space-based astronomy mission after ASTRO-SAT for a scientific expedition to study the sun. The mission was initially named Aditya 1, which was limited to observing only the solar corona. Next, let's talk about objective of uh, Aditya L1 mission. So the basic objective of Aditya L1 mission was to study sun's corona, chromosphere and photosphere. In addition, it will study the particle flux emanating Im Im Emanating, the, emanating from sun and the variation of magnetic field strength. Let's know more about Aditya L1 mission. Aditya L1 mission was launched using the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, that is PSLV XL. Unlike other missions led by ISRO, mission Aditya L1 comprises few moving components which may be a cause of collision in space. There's a list of payloads which have been used for the mission that we have provided for you guys. So uh, let's go, go through it. Uh, the first is VELC, that is Vision Visible Emission Line Coronagraph. Next is SUIT, that is Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope. Next is ASPEX, that, that is Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiment. Next was a PAP A again, that is a plasma analyzer package for Aditya. Next we have SOLEX S, that is Solar Low Energy X ray spectrometer. And uh, next we have High Energy L1 Orbiting X ray spectrometer, that is HEL 1OS. Next, we have a magnetometer, which was the last thing that was used for the mission. The main objective of the Aditya L1 mission is that it will help in tracking Earth-directed storms and predict its impact through solar observations. Next, uh, ISRO renamed Aditya 1 mission as Aditya L1 mission. Let's know why. Aditya 1 mission was planned for observing only the corona of the sun. The reason behind corona getting heated to very high temperatures is still a mystery in solar physics. Aditya 1 mission involved placing the satellite in 800 km low Earth orbit. Later, ISRO planned to place the satellite in the halo orbit around the leg. Lagrangian point that is L1. L1 is 1.5 million kilometer from the earth. This point provides the advantage of observing the sun continuously without any disturbance. Hence the mission was renamed as Aditya L1 mission. So because of uh, using that Lagrangian point uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, because the, the reason because uh, ISRO planned to place the satellite in the halo orbit around the Lagrangian point, it renamed it from Aditya 1 to Aditya L1 because of placing it at Lagrangian point. Now let's talk about the very famous scientist, Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who was uh, uh, contributing with uh, ISRO and DRDO to a very upfront level. So let's know more about it. Kalam joined the INCOSPAR working under Vikram Sarabhai, the renowned space scientist. He was interviewed and recruited into ISRO by H.G.S. Murthy, the first director of Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station. During his tenure in DRDO, he headed the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, that is IGMDP in short, to develop five different missiles. So APJ Abdul Kalam basically developed five different missiles also named as uh, the first one Prithvi, second Agni, third Trishul, fourth Akash and fifth was Nag. So these were the name of uh, different missiles they, that were developed by 
Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam. In 1969, Kalam was transferred to the Indian Space Research Organization, that is ISRO, where he was the project director of India's first satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3, which successfully deployed the Rohini satellite in near-Earth orbit in July 1980. Kalam had first started work on an expendable rocket project independently at DRDO in the year 1965. Then in 1969, Kalam received the government's approval and expanded the program to include more of the engineers. So by 1965, he was working upon it all, uh, expanded, uh, expendable rocket project all alone. And then in the year 1969, seeing his uh, uh, Seeing his uh, amazing work, the government give, gave him the approval to expand the program and also include more of the engineers along with him to work upon the project. Now, let's talk about ISRO's formation, how it all started. So, the Indian National Committee for Space Research, that was in COSPAR, was established by Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru in the year 1962 under the Department of Atomic Energy, that is DAE. The INCOSPAR became ISRO in the year 1969. The Department of Space was created in 1972 and ISRO became a part of it and remains so till date. The Space Department reports directly to the Prime Minister of the country. It was followed by the Kera Communications Project, that is KCP, which worked as a field laboratory for need-based and local specific program transmission in the state of Gujarat state. During this phase, the first Indian spacecraft, Arya Bhatt, was developed and was launched using a Soviet launcher. Another major landmark was the development of the first launch vehicle SLV-3 with the capability to place 40 kg in low earth orbit, which had its first successful flight in the year 1980. 80s was the experimental phase wherein Bhaskara-1 and Bhaskara-2 missions were pioneering steps in the remote sensing area, whereas Arian Passengers Payload Experiment, that is Apple, became the forerunner for the future communication satellite systems. During 1975-76, Satellite Instructional Television Experiment, SITE, was conducted. It was hailed as the largest sociological experiment in the world. Now let's talk about few more achievements of ISRO. ISRO has launched many operational remote sensing satellites starting with IRS-1A in 1988, IRS-1A, the first indigenous remote sensing satellite. Today, India has one of the largest constellations of remote sensing satellites in operation. The data from these satellites are used for several applications covering agriculture, water resources, urban planning, rural development, mineral prospecting, environment, forestry, ocean resources, and disaster management also. Next is uh, navigation services are necessary to meet the emerging demands of the civil aviation requirements and to meet the user requirements of the po positioning. Navigation and timing based on the independent satellite navigation system. ISRO worked jointly with Airport Authority of India, that is AAI, in establishing the GPS-aided GEO or augment, augmented navigation, that is GAGAN, system to meet the civil aviation requirements. Similarly, it established a regional satellite navigation system called the Indian Regional navigation satellite system to meet the user requirements of the positioning, navigation, and timing services. ISRO has influenced educational institutions by its activities like making satellites for communication, 
remote sensing and astronomy. The launch of Chandrayaan-1 increased the interest of universities and institutions towards making experimental student satellites. Some important academic institute satellites are Kalamsat V2, Pratham, Satyabhamasat, Swayam, Jugnu, etc. Now let's talk about the mission of ISRO. First, to design and development of launch vehicles and related technologies for providing access to space. To design and development of satellites and related technologies for earth observation, communication, navigation, meteorology and space science. Next, uh, Indian National Satellite that is INSAT program for meeting telecommunication, television broadcasting and developmental activity and developmental applications. Indian Remote Sensing Satellite Program. For management of natural resources and monitoring of environment using space-based image imagery. Space-based applications for societal development. Research and development in space science and planetary exploration. Now some of the questions regarding ISRO that can be uh, very useful from the perspective of the preparation of government exams. So the first one, uh, who is the founding father of Indian Space Program? Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Dr. Vikram A. Sarabhai is considered as the founding father of space programs in India. Next, we have uh, how the objectives of ISRO are met. So we have talked about the objectives of ISRO. We have talked about that uh, the particular things are of ISRO are the objectives of so now let's talk about how the objectives, how these objectives that ISRO keeps on place that yes, ISRO is going to do this and that and blah, blah, blah. So how these objectives are met in real. So ISRO has established two major space systems that is INSAT for communication, television, broadcasting and meteorological services and Indian Remote Sensing Satellite that is IRS. So INSAT and IRS system for resources monitoring and management. ISRO has developed two satellite launch vehicles, PSLV and GSLV, to place INSAT and IRS satellites in the required orbits. Where ISRO is headquartered in? So ISRO is headquartered in uh, Bengaluru. Next to is the chairman of ISRO, Dr. K. Sivan, who is also the secretary of the Department of Space is uh, the chairman of ISRO. Now let's talk about uh, Mr. Vikram Sarabhai. His birth was known to be the birth of an eminent scientist and uh, he was born on uh, 12th of August 1919. So Vikram A. Sarabhai who is also known as the father of Indian space program was born on 12th of August 1919 in Ahmedabad, Bombay Presidency. Dr. Sarabhai understood the importance of having a space research program for a developing country and convinced the government for having a research program also. He pioneered space research in India. He was instrumental in establishing the Indian Space Research Organization in 1969. He also set up India's first rocket launching station at Thumba Thiruvananthpuram with the help of Dr. Homi Bhabha. Thus, he is widely regarded as the father of Indian space program. Now, let's talk about, uh, well, uh, we have enough talking about ISRO. We have talked about almost everything about ISRO, the mission, the formation, the objective, uh, who was the father, who started off, who taken away, who did what, what ISRO launched, what were the plans, etc, etc. So now let's talk about the complete list of ISRO centers and units in India. <coughs> 
So as you can see on the screen, we have shared a map of India showcasing the complete list of centers and units in India. So it is in Chandigarh, Punjab, the SCL, Ahmedabad, Gujarat, DECU and SSC. SAC are in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Next we have a Bangalore. In Bangalore, we have HSFC, Stark, Leos and you are SC in place. Next in Thiruvananthapuram in Kerala, we have um, uh, LPSC, IISU and BSSC in place. Next in Dehradun, Uttarakhand, we have IIRS in place. Next in the state uh, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, we have MCF in place. Next in Hyderabad, Telangana, it is NRSC in place. Next in uh, Nellore, Andhra Pradesh, we have SDSC, SAR in space in place next in uh, mahindra giri tamil nadu we have iprc in place so isro has a total of 21 centers spread all across india and they are responsible for various aspects of space research such as manufacturing satellites developing launch vehicles or even tracking them once they have been launched into orbit around earth or beyond so all of these are the work being done by the centers uh, and the people working in those centers are like continue observing uh, and uh, taking uh, the notes etc etc of the launch pads that we have launched into the orbits around earth and uh, beyond so here's the list that we have shared uh, so the name of the space center and the name of the place where it is situated. So number one, it's uh, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center that is VSSC and it is located in Tiruvananthapura. Second, it is Satish Dhawan Space Center that is SDSC SAR. Uh, next uh, is UR Rao Satellite Center that is URSC and is situated in Bangalore. Next we have ISRO. Propulsion Complex, that is IPRC, which is in Mahendra, Mahendra Giri. Next, we have Liquid Propulsion Systems Center, which is also located in Tiruvananthapuram, Bangalore. Next to number six, we have Space Application Center, which is uh, in Ahmedabad, and it's also known as SEC in short. Next, we have a National Remote Sensing Center that is NRSC and is located in uh, Hyderabad. Next, we have uh, on number 8, ISRO Telemetry Tracking and Command Network, which is STARC, which is popularly known as STARC, STRAC in short, and is located in Bangalore. Next, we have Master Control Facility which is uh, known as uh, MCF in short and it is located in Bhopal. Next to number 10, we have ISRO Inertial Systems Unit that is IISU which is also located in Tiruvananthapuram. Next on the list, we have uh, LEOS on number 11 that is Laboratory for Electro Optics System which is also located in Bangalore. Next, we have Development and Educational Communication Unit that is known as popularly known as DECU in short, which is located in Ahmedabad. Next, we have Regional Remote Sensing Centers that are RCs located. Next, we have Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology that is known as IIST in short and is located in Tiruvananthapuram. Next, on number 15, we have Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, that is IIRS, and located in Dehradun. Next, we have a Physical Research Laboratories also, which uh, is uh, known to be PRL in popular Ahmedabad. Next, we have National Atmospheric Research Laboratory, which is uh, located in uh, Gadanki and known to be as NARL. Next, we have Northeastern Space Applications Centers also available, uh, known to be as NESAC and located in Shillong.
Next, we have semiconductor laboratory also available, known to be SCL in uh, common and is located in Chandigarh. Okay, so the last two centers, uh, Department of Space and ISRO HQ, which is located in Bangalore. And uh, we have the last one is HSFC, that is Human Space Flight Center, which again is also located in Bangalore itself. So guys, uh, this was the complete list of the ISRO's centers and units which are available in India. And we have shared the name of the states as well as uh, uh, with the name of the unit and uh, in which state they are present, uh, which are going to be useful for you to help in the preparation of your exams. So yes, memorize it as much as you can because these... Uh, are the very basic you know these are the very basic things when it comes to giving competitive exams they are basic yet they are very much important to know about them so as uh, if you come across any of these in your exam sheet you can just pick on the correct answer okay so now that we have talked uh, almost everything about ISRO and exams also. Now let's talk about ISRO recruitment 2023. So uh, there were some of the exams going on of ISRO and there are some of the uh, vacancy, upcoming uh, vacancy in the field of ISRO. So the students who are very much, you know, curious to know about space, space missions and the people who are interested in participating and sitting for ISRO exams can apply for the same and make full of it. So yes, Indian Space Research Organizations is a national space agency involved in science, engineering and technology related to space, works under the Department of Space, Government of India. So it all it comes under Government of India. Through ISRO Recruitment 2023, a huge number of job opportunities are offered to candidates for various posts. Candidates aspiring to make a decent career in technical discipline can choose ISRO to get a decent job. So yes, all of the students who are keen to know about much more uh, missions uh, about these uh, um, you know, solar missions, uh, uh, Gaganyaan, etc., etc., can apply for the same and know in detail about it. So we have shared a list of complete recruitment, uh, like a ISRO recruitment list, which includes, uh, firstly includes ISRO LPSC recruitment 2023. So yes, you can find out the submission release date, notification release date, when do you have to apply and when it ends. So yes, here it is. Next notification is of ISRO Scientist Engineer Recruitment 2023 and the important dates are given as uh, the notification date 24th May apply online starts starting from it has already started from 25th of May and the last date is 14th of June and the last date for payment is 16th of June. Okay, next is in ISRO NRSC recruitment also so you can uh, watch out for the same. Next is from ISRO Scientist Engineer Recruitment and uh, yes, these are the important dates of notification, applying, last date, last date of payment, etc, etc. So go through it. Okay guys, so that was all about our Indian Space Research Organization, which is popularly known as ISRO. So I hope we have covered almost everything that is going to help you guys in the preparation of your competitive exam. So yes, is there if uh, it's there anything that we need to update upon and we need to include in the video, you guys can always comment down below in the comment section and tell us about it. So that's it for today. I hope you guys liked the video. And if you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel, Info Island. Please spread this informative video along with all of your friends, family and peers, colleagues, etc. who all are uh, curious to know about the India's mission these launch pads, these um, uh, satellites and all of those things. So yes, uh, spread it as much as you can in order to spread the information also and the knowledge also because 
such things are in basic in nature but they are very important when it comes to having knowledge about it so let's gain the knowledge together and uh, that's it thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel info island and press the bell icon given next to the subscribe button so as whenever we come up with a new video you guys are notified about it till then let's keep learning keep sharing and keep supporting each other thank you so much and good luck for all of your exams